Welcome back to the Moto America Superbike Championship of Utah, round number seven. What you're looking at right there was a grid full of KTM RC Cup motorcycles. We're going to take another quick commercial break so we can bring you that KTM RC Cup race uninterrupted. So go ahead and grab a little stretch and enjoy because this commercial break is short. We'll be back. One of four races is in the books here from Utah Motorsports Campus. And we're getting ready to start race number two, which is the KTM RC Cup, a spec racing series. 14 to 22 years old, only allowed to race in this class. And it is designed to showcase rider talent. It is the Moto America Superbike Championship of Utah. And we are hanging in round seven. There'll be nine total this year. And we've been absolutely on the gas since mid-April when we were support four MotoGP. There's a look at Brandon Posh, your points leader. That young man hoping to repeat what he was able to accomplish yesterday right here on the Utah Motorsports Campus race course in Grantsville, Utah. Let's go down to Jake Zemke, who's on the grid. Down here with KTM Ambassador Chris Fillmore. Chris, a little under the weather this weekend, I hear. Yeah, you know, uh, I've had a lot of back-to-back -back weeks traveling, and uh, ever since leaving Road America, I haven't been able to kick it. We had KTM dealer meetings in Whistler. Uh, just got back and I lost my throat a little bit, but Dr. Rossi was helped me out, gave me some antibiotics, feeling a little bit better today. But so I, I'm doing all right. But uh, yeah, thank you, Jake, for filling in for me in the commentary booth. Uh, couldn't do it without you. <laughs> oh, appreciate it. Appreciate it, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah. But hey, you can have your job back anytime you want. I'll take it at Laguna Sega. How's that? <laughs> all right. That sounds good. A little too, too much partying at uh, Whistler. Is that what happened? No, it wasn't too much party. It was work. It was work. Working too hard and then trying to take advantage of being in Whistler and getting the mountain bike and the riding in and all that. So uh, it's a good company to work for. We get to have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. We love what KTM's doing with the 390 Cup and keeping these kids out here racing. Yeah, yeah um, it is really cool. You know, these guys are going from all the best national tracks in the country racing against the best kids anywhere from 14 to 22. So we have the fastest kids. I shouldn't even call them kids right now because, you know, they're, they're, they're really talented guys and girls, um, but they're the best that this country has. And we're also getting a little international flavor, too, with uh, Renzo from Brazil. We have um, Alejandro Gutierrez from Mexico. So um, we're definitely drawing a good crowd. Yeah, well, we, we really appreciate everything you guys are doing. Oh, thank you very much. We're, we're very happy to be here. All right, thanks so much to Chris Fillmore and Jake Zemke for that, as we expect Jake Zemke to get that gear off and book as fast as you can up to our booth because he is going to be joining Jonathan Green, who's going to be taking over this broadcast for the KTM RC Cup. Jonathan, take it away. Thank you, Greg. Yes, really looking forward to this one because we're getting to the point in the championship with these young kids where every point, every lap, every second matters because the championship is on the line. And guess what? We're heading to New Jersey. And that is where our top contenders are from. Both Anthony Maziato and Brandon Pash are from New Jersey. And they've been battling it wheel to wheel, quite literally, throughout this season. The gap currently uh, is 19 points between Brandon Pash, who leads this championship with 230. Anthony Maziato, who, by his own admission yesterday, had a problem, blew it in the last lap. He was right there in the lead group. Pash had been the quiet man of the uh, race and had been in that lead group, but hadn't really led. He was saving his tires, he told us afterwards, and he really did superbly time it well because he took the lead just at the right time, took the checkered flag, and now leads this championship by 19 points. Having said that, he told me that he's led the championship by 19 points several times already this season. And he needs to maintain that. Here's your grid then. Anthony Maziato, Ashton Yates, who's already been a winner. Brandon Pash, the championship leader. That's row one. Gutierrez, the Mexican, right there on row two. Josh Sine, the Californian, alongside Corey Ventura. Then it's the Brazilian, Renzo Ferreira. Daniel Castilla, just coming in this weekend, is in eighth position. And Nolan Lampkin, what a revelation he's been this weekend in ninth position. And just where he needs to be, let's hope he can come forward. Ruben Cesares and Benjamin Smith. Jackson Blackman on the fourth row. Nassani and Ungarski and Ezra Bobia. Yes, you'll recognize the name. He is the brother of 
our current champion in Superbike, Cameron Bobier. Devlin Husband, the local man, his dad and Devlin have been doing a really good job this weekend. Trevor Standish alongside them. Further down, it's Jake Fell, Champness, Voorhees, Sean Thomas, Seton West, John Knowles, and Nicholas Svenskard. Surprisingly, at the back this weekend, it's been a real struggle for the young man who brings up the rear, but really shouldn't because we know his skills are much better than that. And we're looking for Svenskard to come forward at least. And joining me alongside me once again, Jake Zemke, and delighted to have you here, Jake, and you've been down in the, in the, in the thick of it. Um, first of all, what are the conditions like compared to yesterday? Because it was very hot yesterday. Yeah, it definitely was hot yesterday. Not only was it hot, but it was windy. Today, the wind has calmed down. The temperature's about 10 degrees cooler, I think, and uh, I think we're going to be in for another one of those epic KTM 390 Cup battles. You can see the guys rolling around right now, getting their tires up to temperature, getting their warm-up lap in. They're just, uh, you know, kind of feeling their way out, trying to get excited, get ready for this race. And, uh, man, these kids, they're exciting. Yeah, and what a backdrop. What a what a setting. Um, you know, Utah is just magnificent. Look at those mountains in the background. Um, but also has its uh, foibles as well, because we are at altitude. We're over a mile high, and that really does uh, change things a little bit. Less horsepower thinner air and also fitness wise. I mean, I know these kids are fit, but I was talking to one of the doctors that's involved in uh, in one of the teams. Um, and, you know, she was saying that, you know, these guys have got to hydrate. They've got to watch themselves because it's very easy to uh, not make sure that you're hydrated, not make sure that you're fully on it, because that's when the mind starts to wander a little bit if you're not fully on it and you don't need that. Yeah, definitely. And not just that, but because for the folks who haven't visited Utah, the air is so dry here. Even though you're sweating, it's evaporating as soon as it's coming out of you. So it's very easy to get dehydrated in this high altitude. What are your thoughts? Obviously, Maziato, in my mind, has to strike back. It's how he does it. He's going to be in the lead group. He, um, he's not a guy that's going to you know, uh, lose his head at all. He's a very smart rider. But he also knows that uh, 19 points, the rot's got to stop. They only have one race uh, in uh, Laguna Seca, and therefore two at New Jersey, which may be his backyard. But he's got to make hay now and in uh, Laguna. Oh, definitely. You know, I think we're definitely going to see a battle up front. You know, la yesterday um, we had a five rider battle going for the lead. And I think we'll see see four or five, maybe even six guys up there again today. But Maziato, if he wants a chance at this championship, he's got to beat Brandon Posh. Well, there he is. We just got a view of him there. The five one six. He's 19 points behind. Yesterday, Brandon Posh won the race. Ashton Yates was second on the number 120. And Maziato rounded out the podium in third place. Jody Barry was fourth. Alejandro Gutierrez had one of his best races. He finished in fifth position, and Nolan Lampkin was a brilliant sixth place. Here we go then, KTM RC Cup from Salt Lake City. A beautiful setting for racing a long, long way down that front straight and into sunset for the first time. Out go the lights, away we go. Good start from the middle of the front row by Ashton Yates. The tall, lean figure of Ashton Yates is going to create a little bit of a wind draw for those chasing him, but can he get to the first corner first? He certainly got off the line well. Brilliant start by the young man, just 17 years of age, and now the field already spreading out, but everybody going for that first corner. Look at this, fantastic stuff, and into the lead. Right from the get-go, it looks like the number 130 that's Renzo Ferreira. Where did he come from? Great yeah. start. The Brazilian on fire. I tell you, that front straightaway is so long that these guys are getting a huge draft. So it might almost have been an advantage for him coming off that uh, second row. Yeah, you never know. Or third row, actually. Third Inside row. Yeah, third row. Yeah, I think row. so. So brilliant start by the young Brazilian. I had a long chat with him earlier in the weekend. He was really just not happy with the whole weekend because he just didn't qualify how he wanted to. And as you can see, normal service resume now as Anthony Maziato hits the front as they go into turn five for the first time. An important corner, this one of the best overtaking going into there. Somebody goes wide, and that's what can often happen if you don't get the breaking point right. But Maziato leads this race now. Yeah, we got Posh in second. He, he overran that corner just a little bit getting into turn six. But the question is, is can Ashton Yates catch up to these two and make it a three-rider battle again? Good clean start, very clean start. Brandon Patch is right where he needs to be, though. Alejandro Gutierrez started well, too. Josh Sine, who had a spill yesterday, uh, he had um, brake problems, um, and, uh, yeah, let him down, just braked at the wrong point, and uh, ran out of brakes and effectively ran out of road. So Josh Sine, who celebrated his 18th birthday 
just a couple of days ago. Uh, looking for a good result, the Californian. He's up there in sixth place. Yeah. Renzo's dropped back a little bit. We saw Ashton Yates make that move in, into the S's up there, and he's definitely not wanting to let these front two guys get away. So a good clean start. There is Ferreira in the white helmet, the number 130. Coming over from Brazil, didn't have a lot of experience and really wanted to try his hand at uh, some uh, cut and thrust KTM racing. And he's done a little bit in Europe, but uh, obviously grew up in Brazil where there isn't as good a, a scene. And he really wanted to get out and about. And certainly America, a great option for him. And he's certainly making it count. They come across the line then. It's a nine lap race. It's Masiato, Pash Yates, Costilla is up there. The 16 year old from California, from San Diego. His first time out in the KTM Cup. Delighted to have him on board. Been talking to his family this weekend. High hopes of getting perhaps into Moto3 in the future. And he's going to give it a go in the junior Moto3 later in the year, starting at Arez. So great to have him on board. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, good start. He came from eighth on the grid. And, you know, yesterday he had a little crash. So let's see. Uh, he, I'm, he's aiming for these top three guys right now. He, he really wants to try and latch on. But these guys are fast up front, and they're starting to pull a gap. And in fact, yeah, the top three pulling away. And, and that's significant, Jake. You've raced in, in long circuits where if you don't get in that lead group, how hard is it to try and, A, break away from the group you're in, and B, catch up to that, that next group? You know what? On a track like this, especially on these low horsepower bikes, it is so important. You can't let that lead pack get away because once they do, it is so hard to run them down. That being said, yesterday, Jody Berry was able yes, to do it. But Jody Berry's not here today. No, he's not. And, uh, yeah, he'll be bitterly disappointed. Jackson Blackman, though, is making up the gap. He's in sixth place, and uh, he's in that second group. Good to see him up there. Gutierrez is in that group, too. Nolan Lampkin, top eight. Ventura in ninth. Josh Sine rounding out the top ten. Then it's Umgarski Smith. Welch, Valentine Welch, the, uh, the female rider, one and only, from Oregon in 13th place, doing a really good job. She's really stepped it up after the 18-year-old. Yeah, right now we've got the group of three, and then we've got a group of seven coming behind it. But it looks like the two guys at the front of that second group are starting to break away. What I was impressed with with Brandon Pash yesterday was the way he kind of stuck in that lead group. You called it. You said, you know, I said, Who's, who do you think is going to take this? And you said Brandon Pash. And there was no reason to say that except the, for the fact that he just kept a quiet profile. Jackson Blackman taps his uh, butt to say, hey, get behind me. Let's... Uh, try to get past the rest of them in front of us, and it's a good tactic, but Blackman really learning his racecraft and having the confidence to do that. It takes some, uh, you know, it takes some confidence to do that, to say, hey, come with me. Yeah, it does, but, you know, these guys, they're smart enough to know they're going to have to work together if they want to catch this lead group. This lead group of three, you can see a little bit of separation to Posh, so he's definitely going to have to step it up this lap if he wants to stay in the race. That was a very, very interesting look over the shoulder from Masiato. Ashton Yates, a brilliant 2.14.4, the fastest lap, but unfortunately, it's not been enough to break away from those chasing him, including Masiato, who you see just flicks by there. So even though he just got the fastest lap, he's into second place. It's ironic, I know, but it was very interesting and telling that Masiato chose to take the lead because he looked over his shoulder to see who was there and of course it was Brandon Pash. Uh, Pash still in third place but you get the feeling that Masiato is going to try to break this on this lap now and go for glory. Definitely and you know this is something we didn't see yesterday. Yesterday at this time in the race we were watching these guys do 215, 216. They weren't in the 14s until late in the race when it really counted. Looks like a little bit different strategy today. Well, it was interesting. In practice this morning, they went out at 9 a.m., and several of the riders really big beaming smiles when they came in because they were all faster than their qualifying time. The only one, perhaps, was not Masiato, and I asked him, you know, how it was, and he said, you know what? I wasn't worried about trying to set fast times. I was fast on my own, not in a group. And he said that's all that I really mattered, and that's what he's practicing for. So Masiato has a plan, and the plan is this. To get the lead, he's got that right now, and get away from Ashton Yates. Yates, though, has has a similar plan, and it's stay with Masiato. Yeah, definitely. And then we've got Posh sitting back there yeah. again in third. You know, yesterday at the podium, he said, that was my strategy. I wanted to try and save my tire. You see him run wide there, though. He's definitely pushing right now to keep up with these guys. Yeah, I think uh, I think that is exactly that, the plan. But uh, because of the pace you mentioned, I think it's going to be harder this uh, this time out. That second group really hotting up, too. Castilla's now leading it in fourth position, and he's still got Gutierrez there with him and Blackman and Lampkin. So a really good second group starting to hot up here in the KTM RC Cup. These are the youngsters. They're all on identical machines. 
And Jake, I don't know if you ever did a one-make series, but it kind of levels it out and makes it sure that whoever is going to win is going to be the best rider out there. It definitely does. You know, I, I, I have raced in some one-make series before, but it wasn't spec. Where these bikes are spec, the motors are sealed, everybody's on the same tires, they've got uh, three combinations of springs that they can try to use to set up their bike a little bit personally to them. They've got very limited gearing choices as well, so it really comes down to the rider. Another lap completed, and this time it's Masiato who hangs in a 214.5, some three tenths quicker than Ashton Yates. But Yates does the compliment, just as Masiato had done to him. And look, Brandon Pash has now moved up to second place. There is really nothing, you can throw a blanket over them. There's absolutely nothing between these top three, and it's been this way all season long. Yates joined the group early in the season, and I think that first win that he took really took the monkey off his back in terms of confidence. And uh, he's a flat track, he just turned professional, did Ashton Yates. Really impressed with him, and of course, uh, when you've got a father like Aaron, who, what, was still racing in World Superbikes not a year ago, um, you know, and granddad, uh, pretty good to have that in your, in your corner. Yeah, definitely, you know, Aaron Yates was a staple in the AMA paddock for so many years, and, uh, you know, finished his career off over there in World Superbike, and, you know, Ashton's kind of picking up right where Dad left off. Yeah, no kidding, and of course, Dad absolutely fettling the bike every night, and I love the way they work together, because there's not a lot of discourse, there's not a lot of conversation, they know each other like the back of each other's hand, and obviously the respect is there, uh, Ashton knows he can trust his father to, to bring him the best bike possible. Pash looks over his shoulder to see where that chasing group is, but they're nowhere in sight. He can now concentrate on the battle in front of him, which is the two bikes that he's been fighting all season long. So so now, with six laps to go, Pash can start to take a few deep breaths and concentrate now on just staying with these two. He doesn't need to lead this group as they come through Attitude 2 and down towards Dweller again. It's uh, Anthony Masiato who leads this race. You know, going back to talk about Ashton Yates and his father Aaron Yates and granddad Lucky Yates, that's really what this class is about. You know, if you walk down through the paddock, you see these guys on the KTMs, it's moms, it's dads, it's families brothers, sisters, it is, it is a great family environment that these guys are in. And I think it's a great experience of racing. I was talking to Josh Sine's parents. Uh, great to see his dad here this weekend. He hasn't been coming to the races. But, you know, these guys are living and breathing racing, and they're with each other the whole of the year. You know, just to give you one example, Sine and his family have done 15,000 miles, you know, in their travels from California across the country to Barber and so on and so forth. Uh, they've enjoyed every minute of it, mine, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of... Uh, heartache and uh, it's all for this to try and get your kid out to the front talking of kids out in front it's once again 17 year old Ashton Yates who leads them into sunset with five to go yeah I just watched him Yates and Maziato go back and forth back and forth and Posh you know he stuck his nose in there a little bit but he's still hanging back in third again you know it's interesting Jake you've um obviously spent a lot of time since you retired looking after and helping young riders uh, at the top of their game. When you see these real youngsters, uh, is that, what are you looking for if you were looking for somebody else to help out? Uh, not that you need to, you're a busy, busy fella, <laughs> but, but what, what kind of attributes do you look for that you, you think to yourself, okay, this guy's got potential to go all the way to be Cameron Bowe? You know, you, you gotta look at a lot of things, you know, obviously talent level's one of them, but two, you gotta watch how these guys carry themselves in the paddock, you know, I mean, you can't just have a kid who's, well, spark plugs are good sometimes, but sometimes you gotta <laughs> calm them down. But you, you have to look at the whole package. You know, it, it's, it's the combination of riding, it's the combination of using their head, being smart, racecraft. Um, you know, it, it, it's a big combination and a big package of what you're looking for in these guys. But what you really wanna see is that hunger, that fight for the win. That's what you really wanna see. I know, I've always heard that uh, a lot of uh, managers or a lot of guys that uh, try to help young guys out say, you know what, you can't dial in speed, but you can dial it out. So you're looking <laughs> for somebody with raw talent, with raw speed uh, and consistency. That, you, and then if he's a bit larry and he crashes, well, fine, we can dial that out of him. But uh, you, it's, it's sheer pace that you can't uh, build into a, to a talent, can you? Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to build aggressiveness yeah. into somebody who doesn't have it. But these kids up here, man, you watch all the way through the pack in this 390 Cup, they are aggressive and they are making moves. Yeah, and it's interesting, the flat track versus or the, the, you know, the dirt track uh, 
where they're not afraid to go wheel to wheel and they do it every time and in every race. Likewise with the mini bikes. A lot of the guys who've come up through mini bikes have, uh, have had that uh, cut and thrust. Look at this, out of release they come. Yates still leading, four to go after this. This has been a cracking race. Yep, don't look behind you, Anthony. He is right there. In fact, hey, if you want a better view, I'll come alongside you. Here I am, I'm Brandon Pash. I lead the championship. I would just concentrate and on there. Are you coming? Are you want to play? They are goading each other a little bit with those looks, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're they're having to go. But you know, Masiato might wanted to check just behind to see how many guys are in the group. You know, yesterday we had five. Right now we have three, and that makes a big difference. It, it depends on how many guys are back there. He, maybe he's checking to make sure there wasn't a sleeper back there behind <laughs> uh, Posh. I don't know. I think he was saying to Brandon, "Look, I'm going. Are you coming?" <laughs> but it is interesting because let's have another look as they come through here. The left, right, the slow mo tells you. Posh is on the outside. Maziato on the inside, and Ashton still leading. Good lean off that. Yeah, watching the slow-mo camera, you can really see these guys, where they're applying the throttle, where they're getting on the gas. Not only that, but you can see how this track, you know, it's 10 years old now. It's starting to get a lot more bumps in it. Yeah, especially when you go over the rumble strips like that. <laughs> they only get two sets of tires. Here's the JW uh, racing team watching on as their man, Maziato, doing the business out front with this lead group. Four to go, and this is literally chess at over 100 miles an hour, isn't it? It's your move, son. Who, who's gonna go next? Who's gonna make the next move? Here comes Brandon to the inside on Yates. Yeah, you watch these guys, and you know, it is a game of cat and mouse, really, because they're gonna go back and forth, back and forth, but I think the fireworks are gonna come on that last lap again. Well, that's it, it's all about, I mean, if let me put you in the, let's say I'll put you in third position here uh, with four laps to go. I mean, are you already thinking about your plan for that last lap? You know, quite honestly, I think these guys had a plan before they ever even went to the grid. You know, the, these racers up front, they're very smart. They're very experienced. Even though they're young of age, they've got a lot of racing experience. And, you know, they're, they're going to try and work their plan to the best of their ability. But you know what? You can plan out a race in your mind all you want. It never seems to work the way you want it to. You know, it's, some, it's funny. I was talking to somebody from outside of racing the other day about, you know, covering this series. And I was saying, yeah, you know, they're sort of 15, 16 years old. And they were like, wow, that's so young. And I said, yeah, but most of them have been racing for a decade. So they're actually very experienced, as you say. Yeah, definitely. You know, and it's, uh, wow, here it goes, Posh, <laughs> to the lead. You know, he's blowing, blowing my theory here. He's, he's <laughs> going to the lead with three laps to go. But yeah. You know, the motorcycle racing, it's no different than, you know, you look at kids playing baseball, basketball, football, the typical, quote unquote, American sports. These kids are doing the same thing. It's just, this is their chosen sport and they love it. Three wide and Yates hits the front again with three to go. You know, that long straight must be arduous for them because, and another look over the shoulder from Maziato just to check, but it, uh, I timed the super bikes there from the last corner to re from release down to sunset. It's like 18 seconds. So for these guys, it's probably close to 25 seconds to get down that straight. So that's a long time, a lot of thinking time too. Yeah, definitely. But it also gives these guys a chance to rest and, and maybe make that strategy of what they want to do. You know, it's, it's really, different today with three riders at the front than we had yesterday with five. The strategy changes because you only have to deal with two other riders instead of four other riders. And so that kind of changes changes the mindset. You know, it's like, well, now I only have to deal with these two other guys. Let me make a plan. So it, 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 it I think it's going to benefit whoever's sitting in third place because now they don't have to be worried about, oh, oh no, we've got a rider down. I think that's Ferreira. It is Renzo Ferreira. 130, the young Brazilian is down and uh, sadly not moving at the moment. Let's hope he's okay. But the bike, the bike is parked up. That brings out the red flag and, and well it should. And that could well be a result. And that'll be interesting to see who is leading. I've got a feeling that uh, Ashton Yates could be in, in, in a chance for a win here. But uh, Brandon Pash, Maziato and Yates, that's who were leading at the time. But sadly, Renzo Ferreira is down and out of this race. You can see he is moving, but uh, he's still very much uh, hurt and down and let's hope he's okay quite rightly it's brought out the red flag on lap, lap seven of nine and and when we left it it was Maziato, Yates and Pash, Gutierrez, Castilla, Castilla had gone up to fourth place yeah you can see Renzo holding his left leg there as he was laying there so let's hope that uh, he's okay and just uh Gonna, gonna be pulling out of this no problem. But uh, you know, we always hate seeing seeing these guys go down. But obviously, red flag. We'll get the safety crew out to him and uh, get him checked out as soon as possible. 
Well, the way I see it, Ashton Yates will have won this race at the red flag because he was leading at the time a lap before. That's, An that's Ashton Yates, the 120, Anthony Maziato and Brandon Patch. That's how I see the top three. Greg, your thoughts, and uh, I'll hand it back to you. All right, thanks so much, Jonathan. Now, Ashton Yates was leading the way under red flag conditions right now, and it looks like they would have to go back. Of course, Jason Pridmore, an entire lap. So it's going to be interesting to see if the series decides to call this a race or if they want to do try, you know, try to do a three-lap sprint race. So right now, under red flag conditions here at Utah Motorsports Camp, we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll get all of this sorted out for you. And on the other side, we'll tell you if they're going to continue this race or if we're going to kind of talk more race action. So. Hang tight with us on BN Sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Moto America Superbike Championship of Utah. And we were in the middle of the KTM RC Cup race, which is under a red flag currently for an incident in turn 15. Rider was down and laying in the gravel trap, seemed to be moving, which is a good sign. Here's a shot of the 516 of Anthony Maziato. Of course, was in a fierce battle with Ashton Yates, Brandon Posh as well, all up in the mix, the riders that we expect to see there. So. It, We'll take a quick commercial break and we'll see. It looks like these riders might either be going out or to Winter Circle. We'll let you know when we come back. He didn't have his gloves on, so my guess he's on his way to Winter Circle. I agree. All right, we'll find out in just a minute. Stay with us on BN Sports. So we're back here at Utah Motorsports Campus, what we call UMC in Grantsville, Utah. The KTM RC Cup race has been red flagged and they've called it a race. So let's take a look at the results in this shortened race. It's supposed to be nine and we got five in the books. So victory number two goes to Ashton Yates. Anthony Maziata will finish just a hair behind, but he picks up a couple points on his championship rival, Brandon Posh, who finishes in third. Yeah, overall on the weekend, uh, Anthony lost one point. I don't think he's going to be horribly uh, disappointed in that. Yes, I think he could have won the race. He was right there at the front. Him and Brandon were, were, were going to sort this out amongst themselves, of course, with Ashton at the end. All three of these riders were riding great, but in the big, long spectrum, Ashton's coming out in a big third place in points now because Jody wasn't here. Yep. And, uh, and then the other two guys are in a league of their own right now as far as the championship and the points goes. Obviously, Ashton's racing with these guys every weekend. But back to 10th, 11th, look at Corey Ventura, Benjamin Smith, um, Sean Invers Invarsky, Ezra Lust, 13th. So all the way back down to Nicholas Swensgard back there in 25th, Greg. Ian Champness, of course, a fast supermoto racer in his own right. Now that's race two, so the KTM RC Cup is all done for this particular event. But let's go back and take a look at the race highlights to see how Ashton Yates was able to hold on to victory. And Jason, it was a very typical KTM RC Cup start. <laughs> yeah, and of course, we always talk about the draft at this place. And being in that draft is so key. But as these guys all fired off down into turn one, it was going to be our three, you know, our three guys that we've been seeing up at the front yesterday. We had five of them. Okay, we had three of them. But it, the, the thing I love about this class, look at there's eight wide gray going off into turn one right now. But uh, the head into head off into turn one. These three guys are going to sort themselves out between Ashton Yates and then you got Maziato in second, Brandon Posh in third, and they see they just started to pull away from the rest of the field. And we've early certainly in this seen a, a surge from Ashton Yates in the last couple of race weekends as his confidence build started to build, and now he's just a regular podium finisher. Where before he was kind of sniffing the podium. Nah, he's but there every weekend. Every right? weekend, you yeah. know. And these three started to break away and set that pace, and it became a game of cat and mouse. Now, here's the un unfortunate thing for a rider like Brandon Posh. Yesterday we saw him hang out, hang out, hang out, yep. and the last lap or two make his move. And I'm sure that that was his strategy going into this one. And then an unfortunate incident. Yeah. Renzo Ferrara from Brazil goes down 
And uh, you can see him moving around right there, Jason. And Renzo, you know, we met him this morning. I feel awful for him. He actually led this race into turn one just he, now off the start. He signed a poster for me, and, actually. Uh, yeah, he did. He a and and uh, it's just a shame to see him laying there like that. And I know for a fact that for him to be laying there like that, he uh, he's, he's probably pretty hurt. So we're, we're going to be looking for him and, and wish him a speedy recovery. And we look back here at the points. And uh, you can see Brandon Posh still with a 15-point lead over Maziato. Ashton Yates now has separated himself from Jody Berry, who's at his sister's wedding. <laughs> yep. And uh, Alejandro Gutierrez, fifth. Josh Cerny, Jackson Blackman, who's doing a really solid job this year. Jackson's finishing every race and just doing a great job. Ninth today. He's back there in seventh. Brandon Altmaier. And then, of course, Renzo uh, from Brazil there that, that just um, had that red flag come out. He's in ninth in points. But he's also been battling for podiums this year. We've watched him a lot. Benjamin Smith, Drake Bochamp, Nolan Lampkin, Corey Ventura, Sean Unvarsky, and Christopher Cosson are uh, our top 15. So a good look at the championship point standings here for the KTM RC Cup. Of course, a series designed to race riders between the ages of 14 and 22 years old. So we've had a lot of riders who can afford to race locally come in and out of this series. And there's only 75 points available. So when we go to the next event, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, there are two Superbike races, but only one KTM RC Cup race because we are support for World Superbike, which of course lives right here on BN Sports. So the KTM RC Cup rate, uh, rate, race cut short, and it was Ashton Yates who led the way from Anthony Maziato and Brandon Posh. So I'm sure we'll get a chance in this next week and a half to talk to Brandon Posh and see how his race strategy might change, knowing that this is possible. We might even ask him that this go around, because on the other side of this break, we'll hear from our top three. So don't move. back at Utah Motorsports Campus, and Jake Zemke is in winner's circle with the rider who qualified third and finished third, and I'm sure he's not exactly thrilled about that, Jay-Z. No, we're down here with Brandon Posh, you know, third place today, race ended under red flag. Did that uh, throw a little bit of a monkey wrench in your race plan? Yeah, you know, uh, I led across the, lap, across the line on the last lap, and I, uh, I didn't know that they were going to go back a, a whole nother lap, and uh, so I thought I won, but... You know, it's always uh, kind of sucks when they red flag it because somebody got hurt and also because we didn't get to finish. And yeah, I was kind of trying to do the same thing I did yesterday and just hang out, save my tires and wait for the last lap. Well, sorry your plan didn't work out, but uh, you know, you're still leading here with the points lead. Yeah, four, uh, I gained four points this weekend, so I'm at like 15 now, I think. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Laguna. <laughs> All right, sounds good, congratulations. Well, I can tell you this, <laughs> Brandon, it will work in your favor one day and you'll be glad that they went back a full lap because it does, it, it is a bummer when you see, obviously when you see somebody get hurt, we don't want to see Renzo get hurt that way. But uh, the fact is, is that it'll go back a full lap because the grit, the field hadn't all completed that lap, Greg, they're going to go back a full other lap and Ashton Yates is the one who won the race. And, you know, it does foil your plans a little bit and you got to think about that stuff too, but we'll get Breck down on to, to Jake Zemke here. Yeah, we're down here with Anthony Maziato. Anthony, you and Ashton kept going back and forth, back and forth. Tell us how that ended up for you. Uh, it was going great. Um, I was just about to start laying back and studying them on the second to last lap. I was going to see where I could do, and uh, but race ended shortly. I uh, hope my buddy Renzo's okay. You know, he's fell down pretty hard, I heard. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with where we are today. Not where we wanted to be because we need the points, but uh, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah, you looked real comfortable up there leading and swapping the swapping with the lead back and forth with Ashton Yates. Yeah, Ashton's really comfortable to ride with. Me and him have been buddies. Me, him, Brandon, we all, we we don't ride dirty with each other. We're all clean and it's, I don't know, it's comfortable up there with them guys because you know they're where they're going to be at all times and they're not going to be all over the place. Yeah, well, congratulations on your second place finish. Thank you, Jake. All right, so Anthony Maziato, the third in second yep. place today. You could tell in his voice that he definitely had a race plan of his own. After finishing third yesterday, that's that difference in points that we talked about. Um, you know, he, he, I know he went to work last night on figuring something out. All three of these kids could win any race in any given day. So the fact that, that he was able to 
get cut. You got second today, third yesterday. Still right there in the points, as we keep talking about. But yeah, he was. That was a good interview. All right, so let's go to Ashton Yates now with Jake Zemke, who's got another win under his belt. Yeah, we're down here with Ashton Yates. Ashton, your second win of the season. You know, nobody likes to uh, end the race under a red flag, but in this case, you and Brandon or uh, you and Anthony Maziato kept swapping the lead back and forth, back and forth, and you ended up on the right end of it. Yeah, you know, I wasn't really expecting a red flag, but you know, I hope they're all right, and um, and uh, I'll take the win to Laguna. It feels great. I've been feeling good all weekend, so uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, and Laguna, I've never been there, but uh, you know, we'll see. Well, you were never here before either, and you got the win today, so yeah. congratulations. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> We got to, you know what, we got to work on, we got to work on Ashton. We got to get him, his interview skills Love going him. up a little bit. But I know he's so pumped. He's hey. so pumped to win this race. Nobody wants to win it under a red flag condition. That's There's right. no question. His dad, his dad did pretty good at Laguna Seca. I'm sure there'll be some, uh, some tips, you know, shared on the old drive back out to California. Yeah, and his dad, of course, the famed Aaron Yates, who won a bunch of races and uh, championships here in the top level of racing in the United States. And by the way, we still have more racing to come here from Utah Motorsports Campus. Super Sports, Super Stock 600, Super Bike, and so on. So we take a break. We'll be back after that.